Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Scooter Buyo playing vanilla Minecraft 1.8.7, uh, hopefully uh, by this time next week, uh, playing vanilla Minecraft 1.9 or at least a snapshot. Um, and uh, in this video I'm going to be talking about uh, flower forests um, uh, and hopefully we'll see something really beautiful emerge. Um, if you're familiar with flower forests, they are um, one of the only places to find certain kinds of flowers. Um, uh, in particular, you'll be able to find lots of tulips, um, uh, but uh, some flowers only grow in flower forests. Uh, and I remember reading or hearing at one point that the pattern of flowers in a flower forest follows uh, kind, of, kind of a predictable band, uh, or the, the flowers are arranged in predictable bands. Uh, and I figured that I wanted to see whether or not this was true, so I came to a flower forest and uh, I couldn't really discern any pattern. Uh, well, it turns out that the flowers that generate as part of the world seed uh, don't actually follow these bands. Um, they, can, they can be pretty much uh, uh, effectively random, um, uh, but uh, what I want to know is if I remove this flower and then create a new flower with bone meal, what's going to appear in its place? Uh, and we all know that when you when you hit the ground with bone meal, it will create uh, tall grass, and uh, in a certain uh, area, it might uh, a few flowers might pop up. Uh, but um, what happens if uh, will this be the same flower? It turns out that uh, it is going to be an orange tulip. Uh, this one, uh, see, it got replaced uh, by an orange tulip. It was a red tulip. Uh, I, uh, that red tulip had uh, generated as part of the world seed uh, when the when this chunk was generated. Uh, uh, but um, when you create flowers by hitting a grass block with bone meal, uh, it might turn out to be different than uh, a flower that may have been there as part of uh, the world generation. Uh, and it turns out that when you hit a grass block with bone meal, uh, so I generated this orange tulip here, um, if I were to just repeatedly hit this grass block with bone meal until another flower generated, let's see if it comes back. I'm um, not having a lot of luck here. Let's try adjacent. Come on, give me a flower. Well, that's an orange tulip, but I want to see what uh, happens when I get another flower here. Uh, when I hit this with bone meal before and it generated an orange tulip, uh, that means it should generate an orange tulip again if a flower ever generates on that spot. Well, I guess it looks like I'm not really going to be able to demonstrate that. I'm not going to continue doing that forever. Uh, but that is true uh, um, uh, because the flower that generates at a particular x and z coordinate is going to be the same uh, when, you, uh, generate, when you generate it with bone meal. Um, uh, always. So uh, when an orange, uh, when a flower appears here as a result of hitting that spot with bone meal, eventually another flower would appear. Um, uh, there we go. Uh, finally, it's going to be an orange tulip. It's always going to be an orange tulip. And that is actually going to be true uh, regardless of the, uh, the y coordinate. So uh, I could go all the way up here. Uh, this is the uh, same x and z coordinate, and uh, boom, there we got an orange tulip right away. Uh, it's going to be an orange tulip. So uh, the flower that generates uh, when you hit a spot with bone meal um, is determined only by the x and z coordinate. Uh, it's always going to be the same flower no matter uh, what altitude you're at. Uh, so uh, I wanted to see if um, I, I cleared everything out of here that uh, generated as part of the world spawn. Uh, it, if I cleared everything out and then just started hitting uh, the ground with bone meal everywhere, could I see a pattern of flowers emerge? Uh, could I see those predictable bands of flowers? And, and that turns out to be a tougher job than it sounds like. Um, so I, I decided to do what I always do uh, when I want to know something in Minecraft, uh, and that is to go really, really big. So uh, I'm going to... Uh, um, teleport over to uh, kind of the northwest corner of this large flower forest. Uh, there we go. There's my coordinates here. Uh, okay, and I'm going to start um, building a gigantic redstone mechanism uh, that is going to auto-generate flowers for me. Uh, so let me, um, uh, let me go ahead and... Um, uh, 
probably uh, so let me put down a block to start here. Let's go three below and I'm going to use quartz blocks. Okay, so there's my starting point. Uh, now I'm going to build a 4x4 four four platform uh, with that original block as the northwest corner. Okay, uh, there's a, a nice easy platform. Uh, and right here I'm going to put a dispenser. And I'm going to load this thing with bone meal. This is way more bone meal than I'll, uh, I'll ever use, but um, uh, that's good enough. Okay, and now I want to wire this guy up with uh, redstone and put a couple of repeaters here. All right, so I've got a nice little simple platform. Here is my northwest corner here. Uh, and uh, <laughs> what I need to do now that I'm going to do off camera is I need to clone this uh, in order to cover a very large area. When I'm talking about a very large area, I'm talking an area that is 15 chunks by 15 chunks. Uh, that, that is the area that I'm going to cover with this. I'm going to do it off camera, and uh, the reason why is because it's going to cause so many uh, block updates with respect to recomputing light levels and stuff. It's going to uh, cause a lot of lag, and it's just going to take a long time. So I'm going to do that off camera, uh, and I will see you back here uh, when I've got that giant platform built. Okay, I am finished abusing the clone command and punishing my laptop here. Uh, I have covered a 15 by 15 chunk area with this uh, replications of this 4x4 four four platform, uh, which means a lot of dispensers. Uh, and I came back to this northwest corner, um, so I've got, uh, uh, I guess it's 240 blocks that direction, 240 blocks that direction. Came back to the northwest corner here, I placed a, a block underneath and a redstone torch on top of that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a command block uh, to place another redstone torch right here. Let me grab this one, uh, so uh, right here. Uh, and that one will turn off. Uh, because there's another uh, active redstone torch underneath it, uh, but not before it sends out a redstone pulse. Um, and uh, so I'm going to wire uh, up here. Uh, so when the torch uh, appears here, it's going to send out a redstone pulse. Uh, this, dis this dispenser will uh, fire a bone meal, uh, and it will cause a cascade of all these other, um, I, I think there's 3,600 dispensers, all full of bone meal. It will uh, cause a redstone signal to propagate through the entire uh, through the entire thing, uh, and uh, so I'm going to place a, a layer of grass, uh, a, a layer of grass blocks directly above all of these dispensers. So these dispensers are hitting the grass blocks from below, and that's going to be causing tall grass and flowers to appear. Uh, and I will use the same redstone signal piped into other command blocks uh, to remove only the tall grass. Uh, so when another round of these dispensers firing comes through, uh, the tall grass won't be in the way and, uh, and possibly more flowers will be able to generate. So I'll just have that going on a loop. Uh, so now it's time to set up the uh, command blocks here. Um, I'm going to uh, start by placing the command blocks that are going to remove the, uh, uh, remove the, grass uh, remove the tall grass. And I've already got these uh, relative coordinates all worked out here. Okay, so I'm going to drop one there. Uh, first, I have to get a command block. Okay. And so it's going to go right there. Okay. And uh, before I do that, um, I'm going to turn off the uh, command block output. Uh, I don't want that being spammed into the chat. Uh, as these things are firing on a loop. All right, time to enter the command here. Uh, so this is offset um, by 119 blocks, so I'm going to clear the tall grass from a 120 by 120 block area. Uh, so we're going to do a fill minus 119, uh, and the um, grass is going to be three blocks above the command block to minus 119, there's the Z coordinate, uh, and uh, to directly above this command block, uh, 
and I'm going to fill it with air, uh, but re uh, uh, but um, selectively replacing just the tall grass. Okay, uh, and I'm going to need to do this for three more command blocks, so I'm going to copy this whole thing here just to make sure it's correct. Uh, minus 119, 3, minus 119, 3, okay. Uh, everything looks fine there. Okay, uh, and now I need to place just a dot of redstone uh, on the top of the command block here. Okay, uh, to, just to make sure it fires. Okay, time to do the next one. And uh, this one I need to go to the east by 120 blocks. And same thing here, command block, and I can just paste that command in there, and with a dot of redstone on top. And now it's time to go to the south. Another command block here, same command and dot of redstone on top, and now it's time to go back to the west. Okay, this will be our last command block that removes tall grass. Okay, and uh, heading back to the origin, that northwest corner, here we go. Uh, now I need to uh, set up the command block that is actually going to be placing the redstone torch on this uh, on that block of quartz that you see below that will start the whole thing. Uh, and that command block is going to be receiving the redstone signal that it initiates uh, in order to create a loop. So uh, let me go ahead and teleport to the location where I want to place uh, that command block. And that is 120 blocks uh, to the west and south. Okay, so right next to uh, this one here that's removing tall, gla tall grass, except this one's going to be up a little bit. Uh, and uh, let's see, this one is going to be setting, uh, a, uh, adding a redstone torch. And just to make sure I'm getting the coordinates correctly, minus 120, it's going to be setting it at the same level as the command block, uh, just 120 blocks to the west and to the north. Uh, and it is just going to be a redstone torch. I think in the 1.9 update, there's tab completion in command blocks, which would be nice. Okay, so just to make sure that's all correct. Yep, okay. Uh, so that is going to be our loop here. Uh, once I start this command block, um, it, will, um, it will go ahead and uh, uh, start the loop then. Um, uh, however, uh, I, I need a way to start this command block. Uh, and so I'm going to start it by placing a redstone torch beneath it, uh, and I'll just do that with a uh, with a command myself. Uh, I'm not going to start it right now because I don't want uh, I don't want these dispensers firing. I don't want the loop going, but I do need to add a um, add a block underneath this uh, command block uh, on which I can place the redstone torch. Uh, so there's actually a, uh, uh, now there's a quartz block that's below, beneath this uh, command block by a couple of additional blocks, uh, and I'll place the redstone torch on that. And now all that remains uh, uh, setting this up is I need to add some grass. So I'm going to add grass over these uh, this entire giant field of dispensers. That's just going to be right beneath me, right above the dispensers. Let's make sure that I have that correct. Uh, minus 120. Yep, looks good. Okay, so that should cover half of this uh, with grass, uh, the north half. And now it is time to cover the south half. And 
that is going to be like this, minus 120, minus 1, that current location, 119, minus 1, and 119. Just to make sure I have that one correct. There we go. There's the south half. So now I have covered a, a, um, a 15 by 15 chunk area with grass. Remember, when you bone meal uh, grass blocks, um, the flowers that appear uh, are, are irrespective of the Y coordinate. So I could be building this platform pretty much anywhere. Uh, I just chose to do it at this particular level, uh, but it doesn't matter that I'm uh, directly on the ground or, or not um, uh, because the uh, Y coordinate really doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so I've got all of my uh, grass uh, set up here. It's time to go ahead and place the redstone torch directly underneath me. Uh, you won't be able to see that. I'm going to set it with a command block. Or, or sorry, I'm going to set it with a command. Uh, and I'm going to just do it, uh, let's see, directly underneath me. Make sure I'm doing it directly underneath me. Okay, so... Uh, I just need to make sure that I'm hitting this correctly. I don't want to screw this up after all this. Um, okay, so I've got the grass in place, and if I set... Uh, oh, I, I don't need to set it under the command block. That's going to be to shut it off. Uh, what I need to do is set it in that... Uh, set a, a redstone torch in that northwest corner way over there to initiate it, and, and um, then what I, need to set, I need to place a redstone torch underneath the command block that's beneath me in order to turn off the whole thing, so... Um, but I'm going to start it by placing a, uh, using a command to place a redstone torch in that northwest corner. That's going to start the loop, and we should start to see some grass and flowers appear. So uh, let me go ahead and add that in. That's 120 blocks to the west. Uh, it is two blocks beneath me, and it is 120 blocks to the north. I'm going to add a redstone torch, and that redstone torch will be lit. It will be quickly unlit, um, but it will begin the uh, begin the loop. So <laughs> let's see if it works. Oh, there's some uh, tall grass uh, appearing already, and we're just being kind of overwhelmed. Uh, it's pretty quick, uh, so that was one iteration of the loop. You can see the the tall grass disappearing, but the flowers uh, flowers remaining. Uh, and I am just going to let this run for a few loops. Um, uh, and uh, when it's um, when I think the flowers have been uh, fully fleshed out, uh, I'll uh, I'll come back and we can take a look and see what appeared. Okay, I'm I'm back already because only one iteration of the, my uh, uh, my loop uh, appeared, and that is because. I forgot to wire up this dispenser here, so I, I forgot to place that redstone here. Uh, so this is the command block that sets the redstone torch in the northwest corner. Uh, it wasn't receiving a redstone signal from the signal it initiated, so I needed to wire it up. Uh, so let me put that back. And I'm going to teleport back over to the origin and then teleport back over to uh, directly above that command block. And now I'll go ahead and reset that torch. And here we go. All right. Now let's see if it's on a loop. Okay, there's grass, grass disappearing. And uh, before, I, before I pause, let's see another iteration come through to make sure that uh, we're on a loop. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now I've got the loop going. I'd forgotten that bit of redstone. Uh, so I'm just going to let this run for a little while, and then, and then we'll take a look. Okay, um, I, <laughs> there's lots of flowers here now. I, I let this thing loop as long as it took me to go get a coffee. Uh, so not, not, a whole lot, not, not a whole lot of time, but I don't see very much tall grass appearing anymore. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and place that redstone torch underneath the command block here in order to shut off the loop. 
uh, and that is, um, I believe, four blocks beneath me. That should permanently power the um, uh, command block and uh, shut off the loop. So let's see if it uh, should go one more time, I think. And I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> I'm not sure what that was. Yeah. I, okay. I think it. I think it shut off now. Uh, all right. So let's take a look and and uh, see what our pattern of flowers is. If I can get up here. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? There are a lot of beautiful things in Minecraft, I think, um, but this is pretty amazing. Um, we can see the boundaries of the flower forest uh, according to where we're seeing bands of flowers. Uh, over here, um, we, uh, I'm pretty sure we're crossing into another biome here. Let's go ahead and check. Yeah, I'm in forest hills now um, where there's only uh, poppies and dandelions. Uh, um, the, uh, the bands of flowers really are occurring only in the flower forest. Um, uh, over here I see some blue orchids. That must mean there's a, a swampland uh, biome uh, directly underneath here. Uh, let's go over and check. Uh, you can kind of see by the color of the grass underneath the flowers. Uh, and it is swampland. Uh, what's interesting ab about uh, blue orchids is they only grow in swampland. Uh, and uh, if we head over here uh, to this patch of uh, poppies and dandelions here, this also looks like swampland because you can see the discoloration of the grass, or at least it's a darker color. Um, could be a roofed forest, um, but I, I believe this is uh, a um, mountainous swampland. So let's go ahead and check. Uh, yep, it's a mountainous swampland, and blue orchids do not grow in mountainous swampland. They really only grow in uh, run-of-the-mill swampland. Um, uh, so uh, you can see that um, uh, the location uh, where <laughs> where you are, uh, where you're going to be hitting the ground with bone meal, really makes a big difference in terms of what flowers you can expect to harvest. Uh, so the lesson, uh, the lesson here is that location really matters if you're going to be setting up uh, like an automatic flower farm, for example. Uh, so I, I, I really like this. I think it's really nice. Um, it's a good visualization of um, the pattern of flowers in a flower forest. Uh, there are bands of flowers, but they're not really linear. They're kind of all over the place, uh, and it's not necessarily in um, uh, uh, in areas in which you might expect, but it does follow a pretty predictable pattern. Um, you can see, I think these are, um, uh, these are bluets maybe, um, uh, alliums, and then uh, poppies and dandelions, uh, and that pattern uh, is replicated over here. You've got bluets, uh, alliums, uh, and then poppies and dandelions. Uh, tulips always follow the same pattern, so there's pink, white, orange, and red in these bands here. And if I go find another band of tulips, uh, say over here, it's going to be the same thing, pink, white, orange, and red. Uh, so there is some predictability, um, uh, but you're probably going to have to experiment a bit if you're looking for specific kinds of flowers. Uh, hunt around uh, uh, for one of these bands until you hit one, or at least until you hit some sort of intersection where there's a lot of different kinds of flowers that you're looking for. So uh, if you wanted uh, to uh, find all of the different tulip variants, you'd probably want to find something in between white and orange, so you get the pink and the red on, the, uh, on either side. Uh, and uh, I think uh, that's it then for this video. Uh, I think this was a, a really beautiful, a really beautiful visualization. Um, uh, thanks very much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, please do leave a note in the comments.